So it's time to start up your saltwater pool. But before you add anything to the water, you'll need to adjust and add the right chemicals in the right order. If you don't, your saltwater generator is not gonna work properly. So here's a quick guide on starting up a saltwater pool. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Matt from Swim University, and before we get into this video, if you want more help taking care of your saltwater pool, be sure to grab our free saltwater cheat sheet at swimu.com saltwater. It's totally free, and it's gonna help keep your saltwater pool clean and clear throughout the year. First, do you need to drain the water if you've got a new saltwater system installed? If you've just installed a saltwater generator in an existing chlorine pool, the good news is the water doesn't need to be drained. That's because a saltwater generator will be creating chlorine, so any chlorine that's in the water is completely fine. You will, however, need to test and balance the water before turning on the saltwater generator. If you have a larger issue like algae, you'll want to take care of that first before starting up your system for the first time. But whether you have a brand new salt system or you're starting up an existing saltwater pool, the process is the same. Be sure that your surfaces are clean and add your chemicals in the right order to make sure that they're working properly. Okay, so here's how to start up your saltwater pool. You'll need to know how many gallons of water your pool holds, and you'll wanna have the following chemicals on hand. Alkalinity increaser or baking soda, pH increaser or soda ash, pH decreaser or muriatic acid, pool shock or liquid chlorine, cyanuric acid, calcium hardness increaser, and pool grade salt. Wait at least 20 minutes between adding chemicals and retest your water between dosing. You'll also want your pump and filter running to help the chemicals circulate. Step number one is to test and balance your water. Now regardless whether it's a new or existing salt system, you'll want to test and adjust your levels first. That's because once your salt water generator starts running, you'll want it to be maintaining an already balanced pool. Using test strips or a liquid test kit, you'll wanna check the following levels. Your total alkalinity, your pH, your chlorine, cyanuric acid, calcium hardness, and salt. Now some test strips and test kits measure salt, but most of them don't. You can buy salt testing strips or a salinity meter to check these levels. If you know you have metals in your water, it'll be important to test and remove those as well. You'll need to use a metal sequestrant before adding any other chemicals. Step number two, adjust your total alkalinity. Now, this helps your pH from fluctuating, so it's important to adjust it first. Your alkalinity should be between 80 and 120 parts per million. It can also be helpful to keep it in the lower range to help your pH stay low as well. You wanna use alkalinity increaser or baking soda to raise it or pH decreaser or muriatic acid to lower it. Step number three, adjust your pH. Stable pH levels help keep your water neutral so the other chemicals, like chlorine, can work properly. Your pH should be between 7.4 and 7.6, but saltwater pools tend to have chronically high pH. That's because when the saltwater generator runs, the pH naturally rises. Now to bring down your pH, use pH decreaser or muriatic acid. To raise it up, use pH increaser. And be sure to check out our other video on common saltwater pool problems like high pH if you need more help. Step number four, adjust your chlorine. Your saltwater generator will produce chlorine later, but in the meantime, your chlorine levels should be in range to kill any contaminants in the water. Your free chlorine should be between one and three parts per million, with three parts per million being ideal. You can raise your chlorine by adding liquid chlorine to the water or dichlor shock. Just avoid using cal hypo shock or calcium hypochlorite shock since that can cause calcium buildup in your salt cell. And step number five, you want to add chlorine stabilizer or cyanuric acid. Chlorine stabilizer, which is also known as cyanuric acid or CYA, helps protect your chlorine from breaking down in direct sunlight. Your CYA should be between 30 and 50 parts per million but some saltwater pool owners find it helpful to keep their levels a bit higher, around 60 to 80 parts per million. That's because higher CYA helps prevent your saltwater generator from working so hard. Your generator ends up working more to maintain your chlorine levels during periods of high sunlight exposure. It can also help extend the life of your salt cell since it doesn't need to make up for that loss of chlorine. Just be sure to add stabilizers slowly to the water. And if the CYA level gets too high, the only way to lower it is by draining some water from your pool and refilling it with fresh water. And if you've added dichlor shock earlier, that already contains CYA. Step number six is adjust calcium hardness. 
The right calcium levels help to protect your pool equipment and your surfaces over the long run. Your calcium levels should be between 175 and 225 parts per million for a vinyl liner or a fiberglass pool, and between 200 and 275 parts per million for a concrete or plaster pool. Add calcium harness increaser to bring these levels up into range. But if you have high calcium levels, you'll need to partially refill your pool with fresh filtered water. High calcium can cause buildup inside your salt cell. Step number seven, add salt. Now once all the other levels are balanced, you can start adding salt directly to your pool water. Check your salt water chlorinator for their suggested salinity levels, but it's usually between 2,700 and 3,500 parts per million. Now be sure to only add pool grade salt to the water. These usually come in 40 pound bags. If you're starting with no salt in the water and you have a 10,000 gallon pool, you'll need to add about six to seven 40 pound bags of salt. Be sure to check out our other video about calculating the right amount of salt to add if you need help. Now the good news is, is that this salt tends to stay in the water and gets recycled by the salt water generator. So you shouldn't have to add it that often to your pool. You may wanna brush the salt around the pool if it's collected anywhere at the bottom. And you'll wanna run your pump and filter for several hours or overnight to help the salt completely circulate and dissolve. Step number eight, turn on your salt system. Once the levels are balanced and the right amount of salt is added, you can turn your salt water generator on. It'll start producing chlorine normally if there's enough salt in the water. So you've started up your salt water pool. What about regular maintenance? Well, for a complete walkthrough on routine salt water pool care, like cleaning your salt cell, be sure to check out our other full length tutorial. And if you need more help with pool care, be sure to grab our free salt water pool cheat sheet at swimu.com saltwater. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and check out our channel for more tutorials. That's it, thanks again and happy swimming.